Hello there, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at swing timers. So I'm going to show you this within the context of um, applets and applet, but of course it has nothing to do with applets, um, this is just a convenient place to put it. Um, so in my applet I've got this um, main file, uh, I've got this main uh, main.java and I'm going to give this class a um, private timer not jtimer but timer um, instance variable and I'll just call that timer and I'll add the import with control shift O and you can see there are several timers here um, and you may want to use a Java util timer but um, there's a specialized one for swing um, Javax swing timer so that's the one I'm going to use here so I'll double click that and in my init method I'm going to say timer equals new timer and the first parameter here is the time interval in milliseconds so let's just make this one well maybe uh, 500 for the moment 500 milliseconds and the second argument is a action listener um, and the action listener interface specifies an action perform method and this timer will call that action perform method every time the timer um, the timer kind of runs so every 500 milliseconds in this case um, and I'm going to pass in as my action um, my action listener this in other words the main class here and to make that work I'm going to have to say that the main class implements action listener although I could of course use an anonymous class here let's just click the error here and it will say yeah import action listener let's do that and then I can go to add unimplemented methods and it's going to add the action perform method down here which we call by the timer let's just change that to e and um, this this initial this value here is actually the initial delay as well as the time interval but you, timer does have methods and um, that lets you set the two independently so you've got set initial delay and set delay um, and you can say whether it repeats or not here so um, you can um, have a timer that only times like one interval if you want so there's a few useful um, a few useful things there but I'm not going to use them here uh, what I am going to do is um, this is very important for applets but won't concern you if you're not working on an applet for an applet in your start method um, there you need to because um, uh, in this case I want this um, timer to run I want it to do some animation uh, in my applet and applets must start in response to the start method so I'm going to say timer.start here which actually starts the timer and this will be called when my applet becomes visible in the internet page and I'm going to stop my timer um, whenever my um, stop method is called of my applet because for applets when your internet page with the applet on loses focus stop gets called and you must make sure that your applet is not um, kind of doing stuff and using CPU when it's stopped so these start and stop methods can be called multiple times for your applets and you um, you must respect them you must make sure that your applets not doing any heavy processing when it's supposed to be stopped um, but if you're just interested in timers the point is here that you can start them and stop them and of course you have to start a timer to actually run it in the first place and now that's going to call my action perform method once every 500 milliseconds in this case and just to see it running I'm just going to do a sys out here for the moment um, and I'm going to say timer running in here and now if I run this code um, as a Java applet and um, we can see that the timer is running I don't know if the stop method yeah I think in Eclipse um, I don't think I can make the stop method get called um, but that's not so important so that's it for this tutorial pretty simple to use timers and in fact um, I should mention that nearly always when you think you need multi-threading in swing uh, you probably need a timer instead and if you possibly can use a timer instead of multi-threading um, it's much less likely to cause your application to be slow and it's just much more elegant so timers are a really good thing to use Whenever you, um, whenever you can, whenever you need something that's that's kind of happening um, in the background, so to speak. 
So that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.